Gentleman from Texas, recognize. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sherman. Uh, Mr. Durham, I thank you for being here today, and, and thank you for your tireless work on this, as you called it, a, a very sobering report. Uh, the American people were forced to endure years of the Trump-Russia probe, and for what? I'll tell you why. It's because my Democrat colleagues across the aisle, the Clintons, the dishonest mainstream media, and the rest of the deep state have been terrified of Donald Trump from the beginning. And their hatred and fear remains today, from the 34-count felony indictment from the radical DA in Manhattan to the most recent 37-count felony indictment in mar lago They just won't stop. They won't stop. Mr. Durham, I want to walk through a few things for the American people in this 300-page this report on Crossfire Hurricane. For those that are watching who don't know, this was the code name for the investigation undertaken by the FBI into whether the Trump campaign was coordinating with Russia to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. Mr. Durham, it says on page nine, at the direction of FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe and FBI Deputy Assistant Director for Counterintelligence Peter Strzok, Crossfire Hurricane was opened immediately. Is that correct? That's correct. First, let's talk about who these two characters were. On page nine of your report, it says Strzok and Deputy Director McCabe's special assistant had pronounced hostile feelings, hostile feelings toward Trump. In text messages before and after the opening of Crossfire Hurricane, the two had referred to him as loathsome, an idiot, Donald Trump an idiot, someone who should lose to Clinton 100 million to zero, and Strzok once wrote, will stop, meaning Trump, from becoming president. So here we have these two leaders in the FBI, struck clearly expressing his hatred towards Trump from the beginning, opening an investigation six months before the 2016 election. And where are these two guys now? McCabe, he's been a contributor at CNN, the Clinton News Network, since 2019, and Strzok is an expert on the mar lago raid. Strzok is an expert on the mar lago raid, both continuing to dispel lies to the American people. On page 10 in your report, within days after opening Crossfire Hurricane, the FBI opened full investigations on members of the Trump campaign team. The FBI then began working on requests of the use of FISA authorities against Carter Page. Is that correct? That's correct. Folks, let me highlight who this American hero is. Carter Page was painted as an alleged Russian agent. Carter Page served his nation honorably. He was a Naval Academy graduate, and the FBI spied on Carter Page through the use of FISA authority. Sir, do you believe that this FISA warrant against Carter Page was flawed? Yes. Mr. Durham, Section 702 of, of, of FISA expires this year, and I'm sure you're familiar with FISA and Section 702. Just for the people listening at home, FISA stands for the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which was created in 1978. In 2008, FISA 702 was added. Section 702 was created for us to have the authority to spy on non-U.S. citizens, non-U.S. citizens. Mr. Durham, we all know that Carter Page is an American citizen who served his nation honorably, and yet the FBI conducted surveillance, including wiretaps, based on falsified information provided by agents in the FBI. Mr. Page was an honest American, innocent man, Mr. Durham, the FBI obviously abused its FISA authority. They went after Carter Page, and it's my intent, and I hope the intent of my colleagues, that we do not reauthorize Section 702 because the FBI cannot be trusted. Finally, I want to talk about Charles Dolan and Mr. Danchenko, who was the main source of the Steele dossier. Dolan had played multiple roles in the Democrat National Committee, Democrat Party. He worked on both Clinton campaigns, Bill and Hillary. He was working with them, friends. On page, of your 50, page 15 of your report, it says that in the summer and fall of 2016, Dolan and Denchenko traveled to Moscow in connection with a business conference. The business conference was held at the Ritz-Carlton in Moscow, which according to the Steele reports, was allegedly the site of salacious sexual conduct on the part of Trump. Parents, if you're watching, earmuffs for your kids now, folks. Put earmuffs for your children. Mr. Durham, was this salacious sexual conduct? What is that? Um, the allegation was that... Um, okay, don't, don't answer it. I will. Okay. Think about this, America. In the game of politics, it gets dirty and nasty. And the people will say anything to beat their opponent. But this is the government doing it. Even the director of the FBI, Comey, said, it's possible Trump was with hookers peeing on each other. Christopher Steele said an infamous Trump pee tape probably exists. Alleged pee tape incident was the only sex Trump party in Russia. You want to irritate the suburban mom at home? 
five months before an election, tell them the Republican leading candidate is peeing on prostitutes. We are aware of the member of this committee having an alleged affair with a Chinese spy, I refer to as Yum Yum, but this is a new law for anyone, and I would hope Mr. Swalwell would agree with me. Imagine if somebody would have said and taken it a step further, Mr. Swalwell was, was time peeing the, on Yum Yum. Time of the gentleman. It's unacceptable, this has got to stop. The FBI needs to... Time of the gentleman has expired. I yield back. Um, Gentle, the Mr. gentleman... Mr. Chairman, I ask that the last comments be stricken. With respect to Mr. Swalwell. I, all, my, my point is this. If you're going to say the President of the United States was in Russia peeing on prostitutes or vice versa, I'm just saying, could you imagine how that would affect any member of this committee? It would affect you. You're going to pick up a primary opponent, I'll guarantee that. That's a little different than making a specific allegation about a specific individual on this particular committee. Uh, the chair, By name. The the, if I could to the gentleman from Maryland, the chair has been very lenient in things being said. The previous speaker from the Democrats called the former president of the United States all kinds of things. And we sat here and let it go. Probably should have said something then. Maybe everyone should be careful about what they say. Who MIFS it is. He's the guy who started the whole thing. We've known it for years. Go ahead and play the video. When the special counsel's office interviewed Mifsud, did he lie to you guys too? Can't get into that. Did you interview Mifsud? Can't get into that. Is Mifsud Western intelligence Can't or Russian intelligence? That. Can't get into that. Well, I'm reading from your report. Mifsud told Papadopoulos, Papadopoulos tells the diplomat, the diplomat tells the FBI, the FBI opens the investigation July 31st, 2016, and here we are three years later, July of 2019, the country's been put through this, and the central figure who launches it all lies to us, and you guys don't hunt him down and interview him again, and you don't charge him with a crime. Maybe a better course of action is to figure out how the false accusation started. Maybe it's to go back and actually figure out why Joseph Nipson was lying to the FBI. And here's the good news. Here's the good news. That's exactly what Bill Barr is doing. And thank goodness for that. That's exactly what the Attorney General and John Durham are doing. Well, Mr. Durham, was that what you were doing? It, I'm sorry, is that what? Was finding out who Nipson was what you were doing? And we pursued um, that avenue, yes. Right, but was he... This whole thing was an op, Mr. Durham. This wasn't like a bumbling, fumbling FBI that like, couldn't get FISA straight. They ran an op. So who put MIFSUD in play? You don't know, do you? I do not know that. I can't well, give you the for answer. For years, you had years to find out the answer to what Mr. Jordan said was the seminal question, and you don't have it. And it, it, just, it just begs the question whether or not you were really trying to find that out. Because it's one thing... To, to criticize the FBI for their FISA violations, to write a report. They've been criticized in plenty of reports. Some have referred to your work as just a repackaging and regurgitation of what the Inspector General already told us. So if you, if you weren't gonna do what Mr. Jordan said you were gonna do in that video and give us the basis for all of it, what's this all been about? Well, I'm not exactly sure the import of your question. If, you, if your question is, do we try to locate and interview Mr. Mifsud? The answer is yes. Why didn't you subpoena him? We expended... Him? Wait, why didn't you subpoena him to a grand jury? I'm sorry, why not? Why didn't you send him a grand jury subpoena? Mr. Mifsud? You'd have to find Mr. Mifsud before you could serve a grand jury subpoena on him. Well, you guys were out in Italy. Was it you and Bill Barr looking for authentic pasta over there or Mifsud? No, we, uh, we not. Um, we were looking for information that might help us locate Mifsud. But you know who I think could probably locate him? the features of, uh, of Western intelligence and possibly our own government that put him in play. Like, your report seems to be less a, an indictment of the FBI and more of an inoculation, lowercase i, of course. And like many inoculations, it may have worse consequences down the road. I, we'll have some time to discuss this matter further, but it's just, hard, it's just hard to, like, pretend as though this was a sincere effort when you don't get to the fundamental thing that started the whole deal. I yield back. I was away from my family for four years, uh, essentially doing this investigation. Is in my view is a sincere effort. The fact that you can't find somebody overseas um, should not come as a big surprise. Could you me. find Azra's re Reclaiming my time, is he alive or dead? Uh, the gentleman from Florida is recognized. Yeah, I, I agree with Mr. Biggs. You've given us testimony today that you're disappointed that the FBI didn't cooperate more, right? That was your testimony. Said that. Yeah. So. We're disappointed too, but the difference is 
when regular folks do things that are wrong and unlawful, there's typically greater effort to try to get those people before a grand jury to, to utilize criminal process where appropriate, not, not for other purposes. And it's just like, oh, well, Bill Priestep, the guy who might have set this whole op in motion, he just didn't want to talk to you about certain things, and you were real accommodating to that. And then Mifsud, the person who juices Papadopoulos to create this predicate that you find improper, you guys, you, I mean, did you ever know who his lawyer was, Mifsud's lawyer? He talked to his lawyer in Europe. Not a, I don't know if so he wait, You could find the guy's States. lawyer, but you couldn't find him? We uh, contacted uh, somebody that we knew it had, rep had represented him in a, a part of the effort to try to locate him. And you got the lawyer. And then now you're, you're sitting here in front of the judiciary saying you could find the guy's lawyer, but you couldn't effectuate the service of a subpoena because you couldn't find him? Well, you, first you know of all, silly that sounds? as you may or may not know, we wouldn't have um, the authority to serve a subpoena overseas. Um, the lawyer didn't know where Mifsud was. He was in communication uh, with him, but he claimed not to know where he was. And we were trying to arrange um, an opportunity to talk to Mifsud. Did you take uh, possession of two BlackBerry phones from Mifsud in any way? There were phones that were provided to us by oh, So you could find Mifsud's the phones, lawyer. but not the guy. Correct. Do you see how silly this looks? Like you found the lawyer, you found the phones, but the actual dude who yeah. got ordered by Western intelligence to go start this thing you couldn't find? It's, it's kind of laughable. It seems like more than disappointment. It seems like you weren't really trying to expose the true core of the corruption, that you were trying to, you were trying to go at it another way. Yeah. As we said in the um, report and as I said in my opening remarks, <clears throat> we pursued the facts as best we could. Well, how about this fact? That we have. Okay, how about this fact, Mr. Durham? The entire Mueller team does a hard reset on their Apple phone in synchronization to wipe away evidence. Did you investigate that? I've read that. Well, why didn't, did you investigate it? Who gave the order on the Mueller team to, to wipe the phones? Yeah, that was not something that we were um, asked to look at, and we well, didn't no, look at that. No, that's not true, Mr. Durham. That is not true, because I'm holding the document that authorizes your activity, and it specifically says the investigation of special counsel Robert Mueller. It's in par Mr. Chairman, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record the order that says that you're supposed to inter investigate these things. And so, like, whether it's the Mueller team, Mifsud, how about Azra Turk? Azra Turk, what's Azra Turk's real name? Do you know that? I'm not going to be disclosing the names of FBI personnel that are oh, otherwise unavailable. But, but an FBI, so the FBI sends somebody to go honeypot George Papadopoulos. Who gave the order to do that? I think that's beyond the scope of what's in the report. It's literally the scope of what your charging order is. Who put it in motion? We get after it was put in motion, the FBI did a bunch of wrong and corrupt things. Totally understand, we're trying to deal with that. But when you are part of the cover-up, Mr. Durham, mm. then it makes our job harder. Mm. Yeah, well, if that's your thought, I mean, there's no way of dissuading you from that. I can tell you that it's offensive and that the people who worked on this investigation have spent their lives trying to protect the people in this country and pursue within the law you went what it is that we, two, could, we are authorized Wait, to on. do. You tried two cases, lost both of them, and then the one plea, guilty plea you got, Kleinsmith, Kleinsmith is back to practicing law in Washington, D.C. today. Yeah, that's beyond my control. Right, but, but the, f the fact that you allowed that plea to occur, yeah. right, and, and then the punishment was insufficient, the fact that you didn't, you didn't charge Andrew McCabe, you didn't convict the lion Democrats or the lion Russians, you didn't investigate Mifsud or the Mueller probe, even though, as we sit here today in black letter, that was your charge. Have you ever heard of the Washington Generals? Uh, the Washington Generals, yes. Yeah, and, and they're the team that basically gets paid to show up and lose, right? <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm sure that the players who... Um, <laughs> exert blood, sweat, and tears, don't view it that way, but you might. I think they do. I think they do because the job of the Washington generals is to show up every night and to play the Harlem Globetrotters. And their job oh, I'm is thinking, to lose. I'm sorry, of a different, I was thinking of a different Yeah, thing. yeah, so their job is to lose. And I'm kind of wondering, and, and it, just seem, it just seems so facially obvious that it's not what's in your report that's telling, mm -hmm. it's the omission. It's the lack of work you did. And for the people like the chairman who put trust in you, I think you let them down, I think you let the country down, and you are one of the barriers to the true accountability that we need. Do I get to respond to that or comment on that? Yeah, well, I don't know if you've ever investigated a crime, 
Um, if you I don't know that you have. I don't, you didn't investigate these, Mr. Durham. <laughs> whether or How about not, Andy McCabe? Did you charge him? Did you gentlemen, investigate him? Gentlemen, gentlemen, time has expired. The witness can respond, and then we'll move on to our last uh, last. I don't know, sir, whether or not you've ever had occasion to uh, try to investigate crimes under the rules and regulations and not under the Constitution that we're bound by. Um, we can gather evidence in particularly lawful ways. Um, can't charge people because we might think it's something. It's not just that we you didn't charge, charge you, didn't you didn't time. investigate the Mueller team gentlemen's wiping time. their phones, gentlemen's and you won't time. tell us who gave the orders because you're protecting those people. Gentlemen's time has expired. The, um, the gentlelady.